Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this MacBook mid-2006 and seeing how well it holds up in 2017. Now, believe it or not, this was actually the first MacBook. It came at a time when Apple was transitioning away from their PowerPC-based machines and switching over to Intel. This would have replaced the iBook G4, both the 12 and 14 inch versions, as this machine is 13.3 inch. So they kind of hit a sweet spot between the 12 and 14 inch models. Additionally, the mid-2006 model was the only model to have the Intel Core Duo processor. Every model after that, including the late 2006, had the Intel Core 2 Duo processors. So what that basically means is that this one, the Intel Core Duo, is a 32-bit processor, whereas the Core 2 Duos support 64-bit. So that means that this machine is held back at 1068 Snow Leopard, but there's nothing wrong with Snow Leopard, I still enjoy it to this very day. So speaking of Snow Leopard, let's go ahead and talk a little about the specs of this machine. As previously stated, it has an Intel Core Duo processor running at 1.83 GHz and 2 GB of RAM. Now, 2 GB is the highest amount that this machine can support, but when it originally was announced, it only came with 512 MB of RAM. As for the graphics, they weren't anything too amazing. Inside, it had an Intel GMA950 using 64 megabytes of its own memory. So we don't have any real dedicated graphics here, but it still works okay in today's day and age. We have the original 60 gigabyte hard drive in addition to a combo drive. So let's go ahead and take a look around. On the left hand side of the machine, we will find our ports. Going from left to right, we have our MagSafe power adapter port, which is of course for charging the machine. Next to that, we have our Ethernet port, mini DVI out for external displays, FireWire 400, two USB 2.0 ports, audio in, in addition to audio out, with a Kensington lock port. On the right hand side of the machine, you will find our combo drive, which is good for reading and writing CDs and only reading DVDs. On the front of the machine, on the left hand side, we will find nothing. However, on the right hand side, we will find our sleep-wake indicator light in addition to an IR receiver. On the back of the machine, we will find our stereo speakers in addition to ventilation in the center. Opening the machine up, you will find our 13.3 inch glossy widescreen display. At the top, we will find our 480p EyeSight camera in addition to a microphone on the left and a status light on the right hand side telling you when the camera is in use. At the bottom, we will find our MacBook logo. Below the screen, in the upper right-hand corner, we will find our power button. Below that, we will find our keyboard. And below that, we will find our trackpad, which is good for two-finger scrolling. Additionally, you may see down in the lower right-hand corner here a piece of masking tape. Now, many of these models have a problem where the surround will chip away over time with heat and stress. To prevent that from happening any further on this machine, I decided to place a piece of masking tape over the area so the piece does not fall off and open up a big gap in the machine. However, if you do want to repair something like this, you can buy a whole new top panel somewhere on the internet. Last but not least, on the outside of the machine, we have the bottom of the machine. Here we can find our rechargeable battery, which is also replaceable. All you need to do is place a quarter in the lock right here, turn it, and the battery pops out. Additionally, on the battery itself, we have a charging status light, when pushed, shows some LEDs of how much the battery is currently charged. If curious, underneath the sticky note is just some product keys. So let's go ahead and see how well this machine runs. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it on. As previously mentioned, this machine is running 1068 Snow Leopard. And it runs very well on this machine. Of course, it can't do anything higher because it's held back with its core duo processor. 
Now you may see some checkerboarding type pattern on the screen here, as well as some wavy lines. That's all things that the camera is picking up. I'll fix some of that once the machine has booted up. However, with its original 60 gigabyte hard drive, it seems to be pretty snappy with Snow Leopard on it. I'll go ahead and brighten up the screen and that'll fix most of our wavy line problems. However, we may still have a little bit of checkerboarding on the screen. So, here we are at Snow Leopard. Like I've said, the only upgrade I've really done to this machine is putting two gigabytes of RAM in it instead of 512 megabytes. And that did make a huge difference. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at about this Mac. So here we can see that we are running 1068 Snow Leopard, our 1.83 gigahertz Intel Core Duo processor and our two gigabytes of RAM. So of course, this is now quite old. Not really anything is up to date on this machine anymore, but I can still use it and sometimes I do use this machine for school. Believe it or not, there are some applications that they have us run that require a power PC or some type of early Pentium processor that many of us, well, don't really have. So either a lot of us students will just emulate it, but since I have this machine and other uh, early 1068 machines sitting around, I can just use them on here and use Rosetta Stone. Well, not Rosetta Stone, it's just Rosetta, which emulates a PowerPC environment for the application to run, such as Photoshop CS2, which required a PowerPC processor. Here, it can run just fine on an Intel-based machine as long as you're running 1068. If you're running anything newer than Snow Leopard, Rosetta is not built into the OS, and you cannot run PowerPC-based applications. However, even if you did run Snow Leopard on a more modern Mac, you would still be held back as many web browsers are not even supporting the OS anymore. So, the most up-to-date web browser on this machine is Firefox. You can, of course, still use Safari, Chrome, and even Opera, but I don't have that on here at the moment, and they will work just fine albeit they're quite old. So, we'll go ahead and take a look at Safari because it's the default built-in browser here. I cannot remember what version this is. This is version 5.1.10, which was updated in 2013. We'll exit out of that and we'll go ahead and use Firefox since that is the most up-to-date browser for the Core Duo Max. We can see here it wants me to update to Firefox 48. However, 48 requires a Core 2 Duo processor. So we are stuck at, oh, apparently 48.0.2. So it must be 48.0. something else uh, that it requires the Core 2 Duo. But as you can see here, it says you can no longer perform updates on this system, and that's because the Core Duo is holding it back. However, we can run everything just fine on this machine. We can go to the lighting site here which I always like to use as an example of a basic website. Of course, we do have two-finger scrolling here, so I can scroll without using the sidebar, which is very nice. Or, of course, you can use a sidebar if you'd like to scroll a little faster. But not much lag there. Believe it or not, you can still run YouTube. However, YouTube will run most likely at 480p or 360p. You won't find any HD content here. Sometimes it'll try its best to do 720p. However, the results aren't always uh, the best. You can see this advertisement here seems to be running just fine. So there's a little example of something uh, on the screen going around. Oh, I highlighted something. But yeah, we can scroll here just fine, and YouTube runs fine, but again, with this aging machine, it's unknown how much longer all this will work uh, to its best potential, I suppose. So anyway, YouTube does work fine on this machine, in addition to Facebook, Twitter, whatever website you're thinking of. 
will most likely run fine on here and sometimes I will boot up this machine and just mess around on the older OS and I've thrown different websites at it and it runs just fine. So the latest Office suite for this machine is Office 2011 which of course includes Word and other applications as well. Here you can see my Photoshop CS2 which you can get from Adobe no problem. Here's one of the programs that they have us use. It's argUML, which uses a PowerPC processor. It's for uh, UML language. Anyway, all these applications that you see here will run fine. You can do video editing on this, although it is very, very slow. Minecraft is no longer supported on this machine, and nor is Roblox. I did have those applications on here because my cousin's children would definitely love playing those, ap those applications on this machine. However, with both of their recent updates, they are no longer supported on 10.6.8. So, there are some of the applications. Of course, you can also run Office 2008 on this machine, and you may have seen that there in the applications. But we'll take a look at Word 2011 here. It'll take a little bit to boot up, but it's actually a little faster than the 2016 versions. So, we'll just create a normal document here, and you got the ribbons and everything just like the up-to-date versions of Word, although it just looks a little older. But nothing wrong with that, because it works just fine. So we'll quit out of that. And... That's a quick little look around at the MacBook Pro, or sorry, it's not a MacBook Pro, it's just a MacBook mid-2006. It's a great machine, and I love using it just to mess around on an older OS. It's a lot of fun, and it, it's amazing how much it can do for how old it is. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this little review of this machine in 2017. And also please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.